and gentlemen, welcome to Retro Warriors, episode 461. Woo! As always, I'm your host, Justin Baker, and as always, I'm joined by viable human, Chris Saturn. Hello. Who's not old or a bastard. I am. No, neither of those is true. I am both of those. It's <laughs> You're not helping. It's not. <laughs> uh, so so uh, when it's just the two of us recording for the pre-show and we don't have uh, additional voices, we always have the longer pause there. Yeah. And so while we were having the longer pause, I learned there was a cricket just outside my window. <laughs> it's, That's good. You got a friend. Yeah. yeah. Hanging out with you. A loud little friend. Uh, as far as housekeeping, we have been having some weird issues with the Discord, so mm -hmm. if there that could come up, I don't know. Hopefully not. We, hopefully not. It's been good, but it's just throw it out there. It's been good for at least half there, an hour that, now. That it's, it could happen. But for anyone who joined uh, Read Along, uh, you, you know that there was some weirdness. Yeah, where you were you were getting muted by Discord. Yeah. Discord was like, no, fuck this guy. Yeah, it was, it's weird because it gave me the little uh, disconnect icon, like my signal strength was low, mm -hmm. but I could hear you guys just fine. <laughs> I noticed VoIP is weird as shit about that. It'll be right. like, can't connect, and I can hear everyone just fine. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what is not connected? Right. I hear them. Yeah. Uh, my week. I've been playing uh, more Nintendo DS. I still have my R4 card and my um, uh, uh, Easy Flash, Scooty Puff Jr., whatever yeah. it's called. Um, I'm, I've been playing uh, more Pokemon Gold, which is still just, well, Heart Gold, the DS version. Uh, which is still very good and still very fun. And I'm just mm -hmm. kind of slow rolling it and, nice. and enjoying the ride. I never played Heart Gold or Soul Silver back when they were relevant. And so I'm having a good time with it. Um, also been playing Apotris, which recently got yes. a pretty major update, playing the new modes in that. And man, that is just such a good Tetris. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I was it's, trying it's to get fantastic. the uh, I was trying to get the native Linux port they released to to work on my laptop and I could not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Yeah. They added um theming in the new one. Uh in the, in the new update so I can go through and theme my blocks like you can change the colors of stuff or the style of blocks or like put a grid on the background or you can do the blocks where each individual square is like in in the tetramino is like a square and has like a littler kind of square that makes it looks like it has like some texture on it, you know. Nice. Um, and I really like that style of block. It is, it is, yeah. it's totally stupid, but you can, and you can also, they've set it up so you can inject your own music into the game. Ooh. You have to use like a, a, a secondary program to do that. Cause obviously you have to modify the ROM to put the music in there. Uh, but you can, and nice. it's just, man, it's, it's so good. It is, it has kind of become my, uh, uh, go to, like if I'm playing for five minutes game, I've been firing up, uh, a Potris. And they also have it set up so that when the game boots up, if you just mash A, it takes you straight through the menus and drills down and puts you in marathon mode. Nice. So you can just turn on a Potris and just press A until you're playing marathon mode. That's kind of how is... NES Tetris works, isn't it? Um, I think you have to press start. Does A work on the main screen? I think you have to start on the main screen and then A on every other screen. See, two different buttons. Unacceptable. Twice the buttons <laughs> required... Compared to Apotris, the superior Tetris. <laughs> I don't know why you would double your buttons, Saturn. So why? what music did you inject? I did not inject music. Just uh, uh, dance. I, I, I be <laughs> Now I'm gonna. <laughs> no, it's just all the sound effects, all of the heckles from Elf Bowling. <laughs> you know, when they're like, come on, Santa, you're slower than Christmas. <laughs> uh, it's just that. So I get heckled by the Tetraminos. Nice. Uh, Santa-based heckling is, is what keeps me competitive. I was watching a video of something the other day. It was some some speedrunner. I don't even remember what game it was anymore because I was watching a bunch of them in a row. Yeah. And uh, they had some mod for whatever game they were playing that just injected the Wilhelm screen every time <laughs> any character died. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Just beautiful. <laughs> I also, uh, I talked about it on upcoming Talking Wizards. Uh, the, the, this show gets, it, it's weird. Talking Wizards sits in the can for like a week and a half before yeah. it comes out. And this show does not. Well, uh, it, so this show also sits in the can for a week and a half. Just early listeners get it. Right, because we have, we, you get you get it, un, you know, the uncut, the early right. listeners, the early yeah. release. So you're going to hear me talk about this in more in depth on that episode. But I bought an iPod okay. uh, in tw 2024 mm -hmm. because I, I'm a, a modern iPod. There's not modern iPods. No. They still make the iPod touch. Uh, no, they quit making the touch in Did 2020. They? Oh, wow. And they quit making the regular iPod in 2019, 2018. 
2017, in the 20 teens, because I've had to learn a lot about iPods in the last week. Um, I'm, I'm trying to use my phone less. I have a Dang. phone problem. Uh, I use my phone too much, and I'm on it too much, and it's 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 a problem. Uh, it is it is interfering with my life, and I was like, I'm going to just kind of detox off my phone for a while. I'm going to try to rebuild my habits with my phone um, in a healthy way. Okay. It, because I don't know what it is. Like, I, I, I can, if I'm sitting on the computer, it's fine. I can sit on the computer, chat in Discord or whatever, and then I can get up and go do things about my day because I can't bring my computer with me in my pocket and have it distract me the whole time I'm doing shit. Right. And... But I still like, I want to listen to stuff. I, I listen to stuff all the time for hours a day. And I was like, well, you know, I, I, I'm trying to detox off my phone, trying to build better habits around my phone. I guess I'll get an MP3 player. And I already had an MP3 player. But it doesn't remember your place in podcasts or audiobooks, which I listen to a lot of, mm-hmm. which is a problem. So like if I'm listening to a podcast and then I put my MP3 player down and then later on I'm doing laundry or whatever and I put on an album and then the next day I want to go back to that podcast, it doesn't remember where I was on, what episodes I've listened to, any of that. Right. And that seems to be a feature exclusive to iPods. Like no other MP3 player since then has supported anything other than just like regular music playback. Hmm. And so I I bought an iPod. It's an aftermarket. It's a refurb with a... A uh, big new battery in it and upgraded internal storage because, of course, there's a thriving like mod community for iPods because, <laughs> of course, there is, you know. Right. Um, and it's been uh, it's been a good time. Uh, it's not been a good time having to use iTunes on Windows again. Yeah. Uh, that is a hell I never thought I would re-enter. Um, but uh, here here I am. Ugh. It's reached it's reached a point where I have now the way I boot iTunes up <laughs> is I run a batch file that I wrote that individually force closes and restarts every iTunes and Apple related process on my machine and then opens iTunes <laughs> because the shit in the background just crashed. Now, granted, oh, yeah. iTunes was discontinued in 2019. Yeah, because it's garbage software. Well, no, it, it was garbage software the whole 20 decades, years that it was yeah, on the market. Right. Um, but it was discontinued because Apple wants you to use their new trio of programs. <sighs> so iTunes was replaced with Apple devices Apple Music and Apple Podcasts, three separate full-sized applications that you must run to interface with your devices. Sweet. Uh, and I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. I would rather live through the hell that is iTunes because at <laughs> least that's a hell that's familiar to me. Yeah. So I've been uh, listening to a lot of stuff this week, uh, a lot of music, a lot of podcasts, a lot of audiobooks, and also but- learning a lot about the weird file limitations of the iPod because I think just in our modern era of 2024, I've gotten really accustomed to everything can interact with every file type, you right. know? Yeah. And then iPod's like, no, no, no. It has to be an MP3. Or an M4A. Or an M4A. You right. got FLAC. You got AUG. You got WAVE. No, I don't right. know what the fuck that is. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Get the fuck out of here with that. Right. Oh, you have an audiobook and it's in a folder properly tagged with tracks, but they're MP3s. Well, we don't want those MP3s. We don't know what to do with them. We need an M4B, yeah, which is in the audiobook format. Oh, what's that? The bit rate of your audiobook is too high. I won't play it. Oh, the file size is too big and you forgot to split it into multiple M4B files. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I can't load it all into memory at once and I'm going to crash. Uh, I um last time I had an iPod, which was at least a decade ago now, yeah, um, maybe more than that, I had uh, refused to install iTunes on my computer, so I set up a virtual machine just for <laughs> iTunes. I'm I'm almost there, man. I'm almost there. I had a separate Windows XP virtual machine running that just ran whatever the last version of iTunes for Windows XP was. And we'll just have, use that. I've greatly considered doing that. <laughs> it has been something I've thought long and hard about. Yeah. Um, but that said, I'm only syncing it like, like right now I'm obsessing over it because I'm trying to get everything in order and figure it all out. And, you know, so I'm, I'm, but like, I think once I'm really rolling with it, I'm going to sync it two or three times a week, like two or three times a week to have to like fucking force restart iTunes and shit. <clears throat> it's not, it's not horrible. Yeah, you know, it's, it's I'm already on the computer horrible. for hours a day anyway so i've been doing the ipod thing look I, as soon as someone releases a better mp3 player i will gladly use it <laughs> i would be so excited to use you know, it it's, 
It's really depressing that all these years later, nobody has released a better MP3 player than the discontinued one that Apple released. Yeah. Similarly, nobody has really released a worthwhile tablet other than the iPad. Yeah. It's like it's these it's two markets Apple owned, and they're both kind of ignoring. Yeah. The problem with MP3 players is that like companies still make them, but there's mm-hmm. two there's two there's two categories, right? There's the three dollar AliExpress sixty four gigabyte MP3 player that's basically like a, a the minimum amount of circuitry required right. to play MP3 pile files off of an SD card, right? And it's made fully of plastic and it's a piece of junk and it has yeah. no software features. Mm-hmm. Or there's the high end six hundred dollar plus audiophile mp3 player that also is a usb dac and plays all the high-end audio devices and has like you know high power output for your high ohm resistance headphone cables and all this shit but all it does is play mp3s yeah it doesn't remember your it doesn't have (laughs) here's the thing if i have 12 podcasts i listen to and you don't have two-way sync so that you can tell the software you're syncing from hey we listen to these ones mark them as played and give us the new ones then it is functionally useless to me. <laughs> I need that. I need it to tell the software and the software to talk back. It's just, it's, it's like, I, it's frustrating that we've lost it, right? Yeah. And the problem is that these companies making these things, their budgets are, you know, a quadrillionth of the size of what Apple's was for every iteration of the iPod. And so they oh, just yeah. don't have the time or the money to put in the software features. And at the end of the day, like, it's a device I listen to sound with. Right. I've, features are cool, but really I just need it to as conveniently as possible play sounds. Right. And I think a lot of it is just that the development into that market has just shifted to phones. Because, yeah, because why wouldn't it? Right. Why would most it? people just have a phone sitting there, so yeah. might as well use that instead for the, for the middle market anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, if, you're, if you want a dedicated audio player, just get an old phone. Yeah, <laughs> but that feels so weird because I'm like, if I'm gonna get, the, get an old phone, I already have a new phone. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy a second phone. And, that feels and if, ins- you're, and if you're trying insane. to get away from phone stuff, you can still do all that phone stuff on your old phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's like I, I it's I I fully admit that I'm in a weird. Yes, I I know I never end up here, and it's so rare that I end up in a weird obsessive niche. Who knew? Uh, and I I know that it's <laughs> shocking to everybody. Uh, but here I am listening to my <laughs> iPod 5 uh, syncing podcasts with iTunes in the Have year you, of our Lord 2024. Is it one of the hard drive iPods? Uh, it was, uh, but it has Did been upgraded solid state? with solid state storage. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so they put in solid state and they put in a 3000 milliampere ba- battery, which is like six times the size of the original. Nice. I've never even seen the battery get down below like 80%. Nice. And I've been listening to it for hours every day. So it, it, that part's nice. Like... I never fucking charge the thing. It just lasts for forever. It plays all my stuff. It's, is that, it the that one with the sucks. color screen? Uh, yeah, it is a color screen. Okay. It is the, the I believe the original designation was iPod Video. Yeah. So there were four generations, and they, they came out with three generations. Then they're like the iPod Photo. They can display photos, because remember before we had smartphones, mm-hmm. and yep. you need to be able to show people digital photos right. when you saw them on the street. And then they had the iPod Video. And so mine is the the later uh, revision of the iPod Video. Yeah, I had the the Nano of that era, and uh, I remember playing a lot of Peggle on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get it. I, I, well, I was trying to figure out how to get cracked games on there. <laughs> and then I was like, Justin, that flies in the face of the point of you having a device right. that does nothing but play audio. <laughs> if you put fucking Peggle and other shit on there, then yeah. get your phone. Right. Although Peggle's not on Android. It's, it's not, not there, Saturn. Is it is, is it on Android? I thought it was. I don't I don't know now. I don't have my phone. I don't I don't carry it on my person, so I can't check. Yeah, what do you wait, whoa, on Android. Uh, what have you been playing? Um so uh, uh Vampire Survivors uh, had a new another new patch and a DLC pack. Yes. I haven't I haven't played much of the DLC yet because it just came I mean, out today, I think. It up yet. I'm gonna buy it right um, now while you're telling me about how cool it is. Well, I haven't played the DLC yet, but I did play oh, the most geez. recent patch, uh, which is free, and you don't have to even pay for it. Um and uh and it is also neat. It is good. Um, but, uh, that wasn't what I was, uh, actually going to talk about because I'd forgotten what I was actually going to talk about, which was front mission. 
mm-hmm. because uh, I picked up Front Mission 1 and 2 on Steam because they're available now on Steam. Okay, cool. And they are good ports of the original Front Mission games, and they're in English, unlike the original Front Mission games. Are these the same versions that came out on Switch? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they are good. They are good versions of them. Um, and I was kind of feeling that, uh, that strategy RPG E thing that, uh, that itch for the strategy style. And, uh, and I missed Front Mission cause I played quite a bit of Front Mission three and four on PS one and two. Yeah. And so it was, uh, it was nice going back to Front Mission and these are a little more simplistic. I didn't play too far in either of them yet. I, I booted up, uh, Front Mission two just to kind of test it. And then Front Mission one, I played for a little bit. Yeah. And and they're good. They feel like they're good ports and I'm enjoying them and uh and I recommend them. I have never played a front mission. Oh, well, they're good. Um, but I'm I'm front mission curious. So here's so how I would classify des- myself. <laughs> here's how I'd describe front mission. So think Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, but okay. with giant mechs instead of people. Uh-huh. And when you go to attack them, you get to target body parts. So if you just want to take out their arm or just their leg or whatever, you can do that. And that will um, uh, hinder their ability to use that in later combat because then they a can't lot move. like dumbed down battle tech. Kind of, yeah. Uh, so only more jrpg So there is well, a little bit yeah. of yeah. anime involved yeah. there. Um, Although, to be fair, the mechs look surprisingly not anime-y true. for being, um, you know, a anime, Japanese strategy yeah. game. They, they look, I know it came later, but they look they were, look very like Lost Planet to me. Yeah, I can you see know, that. Lo- looking back on them. Um, um, now, the, uh, the modern remakes are not done directly by Square Enix. They're done by um, Forever Entertainment, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so... Uh, there's a, a little a little bit of a Western flavor to it just because there is a Western studio involved with these, yeah. but you can still feel the, the anime tropes underneath it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I dig on it. I, I've been a fan of front mission for a long time. It scratches the, the giant mech itch for me without me having to be good at giant mech games. Yeah. And I am, I am a fan of that. So, uh, it is, it is nice to see them coming back and supposedly, uh, Forever Entertainment is also working on a Front Mission 3 remake, which I am really excited about because that was the first one I got to play back in the day just because it was the first one released in English. Yeah. Um, so I am I am excited about that. I am ready to replay Front Mission 3 with a new coat of paint and without on, PS1 load times. On my short list. Yeah. Uh, let's do the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, first up, Apotris. We already talked about it. Received a surprise update, including native PC ports. If you have not played Apotris, you should go play Apotris yes. because it's the best Tetris that that has ever been made. And I had um, thought that it had been hit with a, a DMCA or something at some point. Apparently, was... it was just their GitHub page that got I DMCA'd, see. and they just left their fucking. They're like, "Fuck <laughs> you!" Like we could make it. Like <laughs> you know, what are you gonna do about it? Right. They just have their own domain. Nice. So. I assume they've probably received regular C and D's, but they just ignored them because, you know, what what are they gonna do about it? Oh, I forgot I to answer your question know. earlier. There is in fact an Android port of Peggle, but it was discontinued some time ago. <sighs> Fuck. Fucking EA. See? Man. This is this is these phones, man. They keep taking mm-hmm. things from us, Saturn. Yeah. They're taking everything from us. All right. So if you haven't played Apotris, go play Apotris. Yes. Um, maybe uh, donate some money to the project because mm-hmm. it's it is man, it's great. Okay. It has a training mode that like teaches you how to play Tetris better. And I know I've talked about it on the show before, but basically, um, whenever it shows you a block, if you rotate it the non-optimal direction mm-hmm. or move it more than you need to to get it into the optimal spot, it like buzzes at you. Nice. And so it it like teaches you to make shorter, more accurate, less wasteful, more efficient movements, hmm. uh, which is has uh, legitimately improved my Tetris game. So does it's, it, does uh, it it's teach you some T spins and stuff. Uh, I don't I don't think it does anything hmm. quite like that to my memory. I haven't played that mode in a while. But um, if you're looking to kind of like get better at Tetris, then uh, I think it's a good w- way to play for nice. sure. Uh, Brazilian modder and developer Kriopolis. Cri- 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 I really yeah, go with almost Cri- pronounced Cri- it. Cri- 
crapopolis and that's not <laughs> what it says crapopolis Crapodopolis. Creopolis showed off the Mega MP3, a device to stream audio files to the Genesis without the Sega CD. What do I got a fucking iPod for? Right? I just, you just carry your Genesis <laughs> around with you all day. Great. Uh, my R4 card will play MP3s, and there was a moment where I was like, I could just <laughs> could be just totally yes. insane. Yeah. Uh, Square Enix reportedly killing off several AA and AAA games in development after record losses. Good yeah. fucking job running yeah. the most played, profitable MMO in the world right now. Yeah. And you're just hemorrhaging cash. How are you doing it? Uh, apparently, uh, Forspoken. Yeah, that, that didn't part help. Of it. Yeah. And, uh, and there were some other games last year that did not um, meet <clears throat> sales goals. Uh, supposedly, uh, r- rumors are saying that potentially... Uh, Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 R2 are not hitting the internal sales goals they have for them. Oh, maybe if they would fucking put them on more platforms faster. Mm, no. I don't no. know. Maybe make it so that more people can play your games and then you'll sell more. I don't I'm not a fucking like economist or whatever. Now, another uh unfortunate part of this rumor is that some of the games that were killed off may include uh the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D uh remaster and potentially even Dragon Quest 12, which was also um Sugiyama and Toriyama's last work. So, hopefully that's not the case. Yeah. But we'll see. Fucking corpos. Yeah. Uh, MS-DOS CD-ROM of FMV game Thunder in Paradise, based on the Hulk Hogan TV series of the same name, has been found and dumped, unfortunately. (laughs) I'm glad that it's preserved. Right. I can't imagine it's very good. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that I'll ever want to look at it, but... But, you know, uh, for the one or two people that are nostalgic for it, I'm sorry. Yeah. The few people still suffering from uh, long Hulkamania, (laughs) which is it's like long COVID, but it's Hulkamania, you know, Uh, for the people that never recovered from Hulkamania. Maybe you'd be interested in this one (laughs) still out there. Uh, Dave and Buster's will allow customers to bet on arcade games. I don't know if you're as sick of the fact that suddenly we're all allowed to bet on everything yeah. as I am. Right. But holy shit, I don't care. I right. see constant TV commercials that are like, oh, come bet on sports. And I'm like, why is this? What? Well, first of all, why are you watching TV? Because I got the TV. I got the sling TV. And second, why are you watching TV commercials? Well, because it, when I'm watching streaming channels, it doesn't let me fast forward through them. You pause at the beginning it's, of the commercial break. Right, but if it's on a streaming channel, it won't let you fast forward. Really? Yeah, so if you're on a broadcast channel that you're watching on Sling, oh, it'll let you. But oh, if you're on one of the like channels. internet yeah, yeah. channels, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's stupid. Like Pluto does, yeah. Uh, limited run games caught shipping CDRs, just regular burned CDRs of 3DO games in their collector's edition reissues. For people that don't know what that means, mm-hmm. normally you get a CD pressed at a factory. Correct. Yeah. And uh, that CD will play in the system of, you know, whatever it's, here's, it's made for. Here's the best part is uh, I was I was reading because I am not super, super familiar with the 3DO. Uh, okay. I'm not a big 3DO fan. Um but I was, I was reading some some 3DO owner's perspective on this. The 3DO will play CDRs. It has no copyright Copy protection, protection on it. Okay. Um, so not only did they cheap out new CDRs instead of pressing discs, they, they burned bad data to them. Because uh, they so, weren't playing. Right. So what they are assuming happened is that whoever was burning these CDRs just burned them at whatever the fastest speed the CD burner would oh, burn them no. at. And yep. like many old consoles, you have to burn at the slowest possible speed for the 3DO to be able to read it. Um, and uh, now the initial statement that LRG made when they were caught sending out these CDRs was that they had looked at all the different possibilities of how they could reproduce 3DO games, and this was simply the most reliable and viable method, and they could not find a way to press games in 2024 that would work on these older consoles. It's just not possible anymore. Huh? And then, when they were called out on it, and everybody informed them that these CDRs they made were not working. Right. They went back and said, well, we're going to uh, press some CDs this time. <laughs> we've we've found a method that will work. Yeah. 
It's just such bullshit. Fuck off. Right? <laughs> fucking shit, man. And and they they said that they will only replace or refund the discs upon request. So if you received one of these and you don't know to go in right. and request You're not following the, the news. Yeah. Right. Then you aren't going to get a working disc or a refund. You're just going to continue to have a non-functional product because it's not like LRG could possibly know who all they shipped these things to. Oh, wait. They could exactly know that. But Saturn, Limited Run Games is just a small indie company, right? Yeah, that happens to be a division of Embracer Group. And has uh, games in major uh, big box stores. Right. It's almost like uh, they're dumb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this is such a dumb fucking story, too. Uh, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang revealed that they were bailed out of bankruptcy in the late 90s by an investment from Sega. Which is so weird. That's, that's, that's strange. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I was reading up on it. Apparently, they uh, they had had some bad investments on some cards because yeah. they had released a card right before uh, some of the initial versions of DirectX released, and their cards were not DirectX compliant. Mm. Uh, which put them in a bad place. And then yep. uh, Sega essentially bailed them out until they could release uh, their first big DX compatible card. Interesting. Right. I wonder what the motivation there was for Sega. Uh, uh, it was something with development on the Dreamcast, I believe, which uh, I don't even know if they ended up using the NVIDIA tech or not. Yeah, I was going to say, had, I didn't think they did had the been Dreamcast? considering NVIDIA okay. tech on a I've, project at that time. I thought they used and, ATI in the Dreamcast, but uh, I don't, I don't remember. Um, but they they had uh, been considering NVIDIA tech, and then when all of this happened, Sega's president personally uh, fronted the the cost to bail out NVIDIA there. Very very interesting. Yeah. It was in like ninety seven, I think they said. Yeah, I was trying to look. I'm not sure either. Um. Finally, Nintendo World Championships NES Edition was leaked via ESRB rating and later announced by Nintendo in this goofy, weird, like, nostalgia, look at these NES games. We haven't seen those before. It's going to be so cool. It's like <laughs> NES Remax, but worse. worse. And um, what? Did you did you watch their video introduction of it? I, I sped through it, but it or looked they, like they were talking about the original Nintendo World Championships. Yeah, they, well, not only that, but the ones in uh, uh, the last 10 years, too. Yeah. And they, they show off all the different champions and runners up and these different people that competed in these events. And then it shows them all getting together on the couch to play this uh, <laughs> NES Remix knockoff. Like, that's really going to stack up to the Nintendo World Championships. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's, I don't, it's, this, this feels like a pretty bad cash grab from Nintendo. It feels like a tone deaf cash grab. I've been yeah. saying it since the Wii. The Wii. Mm-hmm. We have had enough of the same 20 NES games. Yeah. Please stop. We all have them in Animal Crossing on GameCube. We all have them on GBA. We all have them on Virtual Console, Wii U Virtual Console, 3DS Virtual Console, Nintendo NSL. Switch Online. We all we have played them. I love that you're preserving these NES games. Right. I think they're historically important. Obviously, look at where I am right now. Right. But come on, man. At least make it like Super Nintendo champion world championships that be or go for the weird NES games. Yeah, or just make fucking NES Remix 3. Right. Just do it. Just make it. I I'm still upset we never got a Super Nintendo Remix or a Game yep. Boy Remix. Or hell, I, I feel like we always give them a pass on 3D stuff, but make a fucking N64 remix. Make a GameCube right. remix. It's not like they don't have the technology. I feel like those would have been a lot more difficult. Just sure, because it you basically have difficult. to reprogram the games from But scratch. have you seen their fucking sales numbers? They can right. afford it. Oh, they have true. the development technology. I mean, yeah, goddamn. Yeah. yeah, I um I I I enjoy the NES. I've always been a big fan of the NES. Sure. I love and, the NES. And I appreciate some of these games that are in yeah. this collection. There's some great games in this collection. Totally. Um but it, even when they released NES Remix, I remember uh thinking like some of these games are great, and some of these games are black box NES games that have aged a little poorly. Yeah. And then they released NES Remix 2, and that was mm-hmm. great because it was a lot more of the really good ones. 
Well, also NES Remix was weird. They yeah. mixed games together, and right? that's what made remix. That's what the remix was. Yeah, it, it would be like, oh, you know, uh, get the star and kill ten Goombas, but you're Link, right? Yeah, you know, when, when you walk all derpy like that, it, it was fun shit. Whereas like that. in this, it's all just speedrun challenges. Yes, yeah, just literally here's like. a snippet of an NES game, and it's like yeah. you could have done this on NSO. Right, exactly. Why do we need this here? Uh, why why do is it we not need integrated it into my eighty dollar a year subscription? Right, that's it's a bizarre. twenty dollar a year subscription, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I do the family plus uh, whatever. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's weird and it's frustrating. And then they announced the physical edition as well, which yeah. is going to come with a cute little uh, uh, replica NES cartridge. Unless you're in Japan, whereas it comes with two functional Famicom controllers. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay then. Which, Thanks. that doesn't seem fair. No. Now I know how Europe feels all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Europe. Yeah, speaking of uh, bad Nintendo releases, that brings us to our topic <laughs> at hand. This week we're talking We Wear Top 10, which is the stuff you bought when you were so ensorcelled by the Wii Shop Channel music that you still wanted to spend money after buying virtual console games. You already bought Superstar Soldier. <laughs> Which was a weird early release on VC. Uh, it was what do a you good find release. Now? Oh, it was a good one. It was yeah. just a weird pick for an early. I yeah. was like, oh, strange. Well they, well, they wanted to release the the Turbo Graphics library at a roughly the same time as the the NES and Super NES library, and they yep. didn't know what to pick because what would Westerners want to play on Turbo Graphics? <laughs> They've never seen one before. Yeah, I'd never seen one. I had I no idea. Um. So we wear. Uh, first, we wear releases uh, came out in North America in two thousand eight. Yeah, and all regions in two thousand eight. Yeah, all regions two thousand eight. It was May twelfth, two thousand eight. Um, it was it it was uh that's late. You might remember that the Wii had been out for a while. Yeah, about a year and a half. By the time we wear started yeah. coming out, um, they as kept far as feeling like they were pushing it back too at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it it was strange because I, I VC was fast. It was like within the first couple months. Yeah, it was. I think it was within the first month, and and it wasn't a lot, but they started trickling them out, and they were pretty steady for at least a few, at least through like two thousand nine. Oh yeah, they were they were pretty steady with it. Um, I was pretty invested in the virtual console. Mm -hmm. I was not. I had emulators on my PC, but I did not game on my PC regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked having consoles and there were not a million billion Chinese emulation devices back right. in, you know, 2008. Um, so I was very excited at the idea of me getting to spend, you know, five to 15 bucks a week and picking up a nice collection of VC stuff. Um, I never really followed WiiWare titles except for the notable stuff like, Hey, right. Mega Man nine is coming out. Cave story just came out like the big right. stuff. Um, I wasn't like, WiiWare was like. I just treated it like the chaff. It was like, this is the garbage market over here next to the virtual console. Yeah. So I never paid much attention to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a similar boat because I, uh, I had also followed virtual console very closely. And I did play a bunch of emulators on my PC all the time. But I my thought process, because I was in my uh, mid-20s uh, when the, the so Wii came we out. So we were so young. Right. I was a and teenager so, working at GameStop. Uh, so I had some disposable income, not a ton, but a little, but a five or ten dollar game purchase was reasonable. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I uh, I wanted to invest in the idea of re-releasing old games. That was sure. yeah. something I was very excited about. And so this I is bought, before digital marketplaces were super common. Right. And and no one was doing this kind of thing. Yeah. And so so I bought a ton of virtual console games. I think I ended up with over 100 by the end of the console's life. How quickly did you realize how much of a fucking nightmare it was to manage data on a Wii? Oh, man. <laughs> I was so happy when they introduced the SD card channel. Uh, oh, man. Yep. That made it so much better. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, so the I don't remember, even remember which website I used to go to that had a, a weekly update of what virtual console games had been released. Yeah. Uh, but they were also uh, showing what WiiWare games had been released, and most of them I remember looking at it like I don't I don't know why anybody would care about that. But every yeah. now and then one would pop up in the feed and be like, oh, I I, I could check that out. I would mm -hmm. I would look at that. I know this is an utter tangent, but I I think because I hooked my Wii up for this because. Mm -hmm. We wear games use a lot of different control methods, like we remote nunchuck, sideways we remote, regular we right. remote, motion yeah. controls, uh, class controller. So emulating them is a pain in the dick because you're constantly True. having to change controller profiles. Right. 
Um, and so I, I just use just, a Wiimote on my PC when I play things like this. I, I was going to set that up and then it, it was like, give me hassle. And I was like, fuck it. I have a Wii. I'll just plug it in. Right. Cause I have the entire North American and PAL territory. Uh, we the, the, the whole, yeah. uh, every title on my SD card. Yeah. Cause totally they're tiny legally obtained. <laughs> Yeah, I um, it's my legal backup of every right. WiiWare game in two <laughs> from regions. every region. Yeah. Um, and I had I had taken my Wii out and and at the same time I had found someone that had ripped all of the Wii music, nice the entire Wii soundtrack, and I had it on my iPod. <laughs> so I'm listening to the Wii soundtrack and setting up my Wii in the living room, like da 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 da, da <laughs> and and. My, I got to introduce my daughter to the Wii because I realized yeah. she'd never seen one and she has been addicted to Wii sports. Nice. She's so excited by it. And I, 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 I forgot, like it makes me sad that the Wii was very much a console that like, and this, I guess this kind of gets to how WiiWare fits into the picture because WiiWare games were just like, they, they were small experiences. Yes. Some of them were basically demos for retail games. Right. Um. They they, they were very just size wise. A couple very of them small were literally games. demos for retail yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them felt like almost like beefed up flash games. Right. And and it in context they made sense mm-hmm. because the Wii was a system that you were supposed to hang out on. Right. Like there was the everybody votes channel and the weather yeah. channel and the you know the you would like hang out on the Wii, right. and that's not a thing anymore. Like the, the Nintendo doesn't want you hanging out on. The, there's nowhere to hang out on the Switch. It's no. just like do you want to play a game or do you not want to play a game? Okay, then put your game down. Right. And on, on the there's, Wii, we spent no a lot of channel time. to share your me creations with. <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time making goofy me's, yeah. doing the the everybody votes channel was just dumb and weird, but it was how, fun. How many dumb me's did you download from the check me out channel? I don't know, man. We, I, but we, we I have had a lot of stupid memes. I have a Snoop Dogg. I have a <laughs> Peter Griffin. I have one that was named Blowjob Betty, where the nose is positioned <laughs> to where it looks like it's a dick going into a mouth. Yeah. So, you know, it's a time. They, they in, in even the Wii U and the 3DS maintained this. These were systems, mm-hmm. they, these were, you know, almost like lifestyle products. Yeah. Where you would spend a lot of time on them not actually playing a game right just be in the nintendo environment yeah and 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 i i miss i miss that it was yeah. nice you yeah. know uh, and i think it may just be a byproduct of not being on my phone not being on my everything <laughs> device that makes this kind of lifestyle design pointless and wasted right. money you know like that that's the problem is phones made this design yeah not not worth it anymore because yeah, because why go on meverse when twitter is always right. present we already have an everything device. We don't need another one, yeah. you know? And, and so uh, I was just thinking about that. Um, but in that context, this is where we wear fits. These yeah. are smaller titles. These are, these are littler things, often demos or light versions of bigger games. And, and, and also of... just to keep it in context, this was right around the time that the uh, iPhone was launching. Yes. And so uh, the idea of tiny downloadable apps was still novel yeah. and, uh, and relatively new. And so, uh, this was a, a different way to get games that we weren't previously used to. So there was a lot of experimentation as far as what needs to be on the digital uh, game store and what needs to be a retail release. And they never did figure that out, which is why you get some good games on WiiWare and Chicken Shoot on a disc <laughs> for Wii. Yeah, it's it's strange. Um All of this, I think, to say, to bring it all around, mm-hmm. most WiiWare titles of note exist elsewhere and in better form and we'll talk about them later right there's a lot of chaff here there's a lot yeah. of like apps there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that just a fireplace app aren't something you really would want to spend time with because right. you don't need a fireplace app you have youtube on your phone right so what do you need that for hell right. pluto tv has a fucking fireplace channel like yep. you don't you know um netflix has a fireplace uh show too oh yeah they do don't they right so uh, th- these are just kind of our picks. Um, yeah. We're going to talk honorable mentions later, and that's really where the meat of WiiWare kind <laughs> of is for the most part. Right. And I'm going to go through or my was. picks. I'm going to go through my picks backward too. I want to read my first pick okay. last. So All I'm right. I'm going to start. And my first pick was uh, Bomberman Blast. Okay. Uh, this was 2008. This is Hudson Soft, and oh, you only it have is, four picks. I only have four because one All of my right. picks is three picks. So technically, I have seven picks. 
That's fair. A couple of my picks are multiples as well. So, uh, uh, and, and this was hard. This was really hard because when you cut out the games that exist in better form elsewhere, like uh, uh, I'll just spoil Cave Story. Why are you mm-hmm. going to play the WiiWare version of Cave Story? It is much less feature complete than any other version that you can right. get anywhere else. Yeah. Don't play that version. So right. we don't want to put it on our top 10 because who's going to go play the WiiWare version of Cave Story? Right. You shouldn't. There are way better versions of that game. Yeah. Um, and when we cut that out and we cut the chaff out, yeah, there's just not a lot left. <laughs> um, Bomberman Blast is, is it's a really fun Bomberman title. It has, um, I love this mode. It has a countdown mode. Mm-hmm. And I think what it does is it starts your death clock. So you get hit and you have 15 seconds before you die. Yeah. But it seems to reset it when you bomb someone else. Nice. Which is weird. And I love it because... <laughs> I am very bad at Bomberman, and this lets me stay in the game and just kind of be crazy and have fun without like, oh, you got hit one time, you're dead. You know, that was nice. Um, It has a mode that just does random rules, and they change each round. And I loved this. Uh, So you you would jump in as random rules, and it would tell you what they are up front. It'll be like, all right, two minutes, countdown on this, 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 and this. You jump in, you play, and then when it's over, it changes the random rules to the next session. Uh, because one thing I notice in specifically games like Super Smash Brothers and Bomberman and stuff is you don't want to keep playing the same, at least I don't, I don't want to keep playing the same rules over and over and over and over again. I want to hmm. keep changing it up, you know? Right, right. Because uh, everybody's always better at something kind of different. You know, some people right. are like, yeah, Smash is only good, Final Destination, no, no items. Then other right. people are like, no, I'm good on the big stages with a million Pokeballs everywhere. <laughs> and so it, that that was nice. It also has a really great feature that, Saturn, maybe you can tell me, I've not seen this in another Bomberman, hmm. but this is my favorite Bomberman feature ever. When all human players are knocked out of the game, it pops up and says, hey, the only people left are CPUs. Do you want me to fast forward to the end of yeah. the round and tell you who won? I want to say the, uh, the the Xbox Live Arcade version did that as well. It is criminal that every yeah. Bomberman game doesn't have this. Like, I, I get it on the TurboGrafx or Super Nintendo. It's, there's older tech. Right. Maybe okay. they couldn't yeah, it gets figure a it pass. out yet. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I agree. Any newer version needs that. That should be uh, just built in. Yeah. It was just a really fun accessible uh this one was a sideways we remote game yep uh bomberman it just had a few modes now there is in japan the game got a full retail release yeah um and it had a, like a story mode and stuff if you're nice. into the bomberman story modes um yes i know i know <laughs> so defensive <laughs> you know that i was about to say because i know a lot of them suck they do yeah um they're they're really up and down uh but my, my the, uh, favorite Bomberman story was Bomberman 2 on NES, where the entire story is Black Bomber blows up a bank and some police catch him, <laughs> and then White Bomber goes after him. There's banks in Bomberman Land? Who knew? <laughs> Do they Are they full of bombs or money? I, I don't, you know, that's a good question. We only ever see the bank kind of like the wall blow up, and then is the police bombs car. money? I don't, you know, like they've got to cost money, you'd think. Um,. So yeah, yeah, all 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 three regions, uh, um, uh, Japan, uh, uh, North America, and, and PAL territories got mm-hmm. the stripped down WiiWare version. Yeah, um, and it's just uh, it's good. So like, if you're not in the story mode, it's the perfect little bite sized bomber man that's that's easy to just put on and play a bunch of rounds in a row without having to fuss with rules or any of that kind of or sitting there watching the game masturbate as it finishes a CPU <laughs> right. round. I, I thought it was really really fun. It was a really yeah. good game. I had a good time with that. What's your uh, first uh, pick here? I'm going to also go with a, um, a basic successor to an NES game, uh, yeah. and that's uh, Excite Bike World Rally. Okay. Yeah. I, saw, you... I, I, I meant to play this one. I did. Oh, it's man. on my Wii, and I didn't get to it. You should. Uh, okay. it, is, it is basically the original Excite Bike from a from an isometric perspective mm-hmm. with uh, cute little uh, stylized graphics. Um and you can still make your courses just like you could on the original. And you can, uh, unlike the original, you can save them after you mm-hmm. make them instead of them all vanishing as soon as you reset your system. Um, uh, but I had a bunch of fun with this back in the day. It is, It was uh, online uh, playable, so that you can okay. play against other players. And I think you could share your courses too. It's been a long time since, since online even worked on the Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like you could do that. Um, the big downside to it today, especially 
is that a lot of the unlockables, like uh, course pieces and stuff like that, are all locked behind playing online, uh, which you can't anymore. Can't do anymore. Yeah. So I'm hoping somebody out there has like some hacked save files for it or something or some kind of cheat or modified version, something because there should be a fully unlocked version out there because yeah. the fully unlocked game is a ton of fun and mm-hmm. absolutely worth checking out. If you enjoyed the original Excite Bike anyway, um, and it was developed by the same guys that made uh, Excite Truck and that other spinoff game on the Wii that I can't oh, yeah. think of the name of all of a sudden. Yeah. So there was like this weird resurgence of the Excite Bike series in the Wii era. Yeah, the Excite brand. Yeah. Um, Excite but, uh, bots, maybe. Um, Wasn't but, the one that they were like robots? I think so. But this one was the one that I cared about. Uh, yeah. Excite Bike World Rally. Uh, it plays the most like the original. It really does uh, feel like the NES game, just upgraded. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you were a fan of the NES game, I definitely recommend, uh, going and find it cause it is adorable if nothing else. Yeah. Um, my next one is Pokemon Rumble. Okay. Uh, so this is 2009 developed by frequent Pokemon spinoff developer Umbrella. Uh, it is basically a Pokemon themed beat em up, mm. but instead of regular Pokemon, you play cute little wind up toy versions of Pokemon. Hmm. And you kind of, your movement is kind of this like bouncy, like those little vibrating football boards from the 70s. Hmm. I think that's kind of the vibe they're going for. Yeah. And the whole game is basically you travel through different like themed zones. Like there's a jungle zone and a beach zone and a forest zone or, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And you fight and collect toy Pokemon in an effort to join and win the Pokemon Rumble Battle Royale where all the big Pokemon all go in this big Rumble arena and bounce into each other till someone dies. Okay. Um, but what's great about it is the the it, it's just a straight beat em up. But as you're going through the game, whenever you hit a Pokemon, because e- each one of your Pokemon has an attack determined by what kind of Pokemon there are. Mm-hmm. So like not every two Pikachu's have the same attacks, um, but they they all pick from the same suite of Pikachu attacks. So as you go through and you defeat toys, that some of them will fall over. And when you pick them up, they add to your little inventory list. And you can, on the fly, switch to them. There's a little animation that you have to wait through where they get wound up with a little wind-up key, like an old-school wind-up toy. Nice. And then they go into the arena. So you're switching through them real fast. You're collecting them real fast. You're kind of going through, like, all right, I caught three Pikachus. Which one has the coolest attack or the best yeah. stats or whatever? Um, and it's all just really fast and snappy. There's no, like sitting in shops or throwing pokeballs or anything like that it's just sort of a pokemon themed collect them up nice and it's just real fun it's cute it's easy uh it's it's just a good time um i i i found it to be really accessible uh and i enjoyed the collecting in it a, a, a whole bunch uh it did spawn three sequels <laughs> Uh, there's a version on 3DS, version on Wii U, and there was a m- mobile version of Pokemon Rumble, which now I'm interested in checking out after playing this one. It looks like um, there's two on 3DS. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Pokemon Rumble World and Pokemon Rumble Blast. Oh, yeah. My thing is this. What I loved about it was how simple it was. Yeah. It's just, it, there's like a little bit of like, it has some story where you're like, you want to be the best Pokemon wind-up toy, but you suck. <laughs> um, and And then it's just like, okay, go. And so I, I, it's like one of those things where like, if you add more layers of complexity to it, I wouldn't like it as much. Right. But it's just a pure, super easy thing. It's, uh, it's good. I, I, I liked it a lot. It was a really fun time. Nice. What was your next pick? Uh, so next I will go with the, uh, Bubble Wobble Plus and Puzzle Bubble Plus. I'm kind of lumping these together because they're relatively basic. There's a Rainbow Islands in there, isn't, isn't there? Let's not talk about that. Oh, Oh it's, no! It's really bad. Oh, um, and I don't recommend that you play R- Rainbow Islands Plus. All right, uh, I I had a very poor experience with that one. Um, but Ball of Ball Plus and Puzzle Ball Plus are both really solid, uh, basically remakes uh, uh, of the originals. And yeah, and uh, Puzzle Ball Plus, for the record, was called Bust a Move Plus here in North America because mm-hmm. they were still differentiating that at the time. Right. Um, but uh, they are essentially just the the basic original games with upgraded graphics and and a, a couple little touches uh I, if i remember right it did support four player on bust a move plus 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, been a couple of years since I went back and replayed it, but uh, we played a bunch of multiplayer of this uh, back when it when it first came out, and and uh, Bubble Bubble Plus as well. It's uh, very good for uh, multiplayer on the Wii, which was really one of those things that the Wii excelled at was yeah. those those little uh, local multiplayer experiences. Cute, small, yeah, multiplayer um, stuff. Now the uh, the version of Bubble Wobble was uh, eventually ported to the uh, Xbox 360 uh, through Live Arcade, but they called it Bubble Wobble Neo for some reason. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I want to say it may be backwards compatible uh, on the current Xbox, mm-hmm. um, but either way, you can still get it on the 360 if if you need to, just because it's not like you can get the WiiWare version anymore. <laughs> Yeah, um, we can. It's on archive.org. Well, right. So download yeah, it's free. Can, you can get it uh, uh, <laughs> for a very low price. Yeah. Um, uh, now, the one thing I will say about uh, both of these is they're ugly. Okay. Yeah. They, a lot of WiiWare games are. Yes. I don't know what the size limitations were for WiiWare, but they are very small games. Right. Um, a, a lot of it was just the internal storage on the Wii was very small. True. Had, very what, true. 5, yeah. 12 megs total, I think. Yeah. It was teeny tiny. Um. So, uh, yeah, and it's ugly. It looks like a shitty early 3D great game played on in 2D. Yeah. But uh, but the gameplay is solid, and that's yeah. what's important. My next one is a weird one. Uh, it is yeah. Space Invaders Get Even. Yes. This was released in 2008 by Taito. This is a really bizarre game in which you control the Space Invaders UFO. Mm-hmm. And you use the Wii remote and the nunchuck to attack like monuments to destroy the earth and get even for all your space invaders <laughs> getting killed. Um, straight up, the controls are kind of jank uh, mm-hmm. because the way you play is you move your UFO with the uh, nunchuck stick. You point the Wii remote at the TV at what you want to shoot. Mm -hmm. And you shake it to reabsorb your lost space invaders because you have a selection of different attack modes, like different attack patterns. Mm -hmm. And you'll use them in different scenarios against different enemies and different types. And then as you use them, you're like shooting out multicolored space invaders. They're like cute little 2D sprites. And they form your attacks. And then you got to shake to to like suck them back up. (laughs) Um, And it's just... Fun and weird and kind of janky and kind of hard to control, but also just such a fun, silly concept. Yeah, that uh, I, I had a good time with it. Um, it's it, it's it is a timed game, so it's like a mission based game. The missions are timed. As you mm-hmm. destroy enemies, that adds more time. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where you're you know you're constantly uh, and as you if you get hit, you lose time. Yeah, and it's just a fun arcade kind of feeling. Like it's one of those we wear games where like or just Wii games in general where like it doesn't control great. It's a little bit fussy. Yeah. But it's just such a cool idea and like so novel and cute and funny yeah. that you don't really care, you know? Right. Uh and I had a I had a pretty pretty good time with this one. Um I'm interested to see how ridiculous the missions get. Uh and you start off with like I think there's like six different attack modes. And they are all very different from one another. That was so one it, that I almost got several times back in the day and never yeah. did. And now I kind of regret it. Oh, it's fun. You, sh- yeah. you should absolutely play. Like, If for no other reason than to see the silliness yeah. of now the space invaders are here to get even. Nice. Uh, which is, is, is just kind of funny in its own right. Yeah. But it's a, it's, a, it's a good time. I, I, nice. I, I like that one. I think, uh, I think still my favorite weird spinoff of space invaders is Space Raiders on the GameCube. Oh, which oh, tries to that take it seriously. Oh, did we talk about that one on our Space I think Invaders we did. episode? I think we did. It sounds vaguely familiar. It's so dumb. Yeah. Um, uh, what's your next one? So to, to kind of catch us back up on the same pace, since I have one extra, I'm just going to lump some of mine together. Sure. And just do the general Final Fantasy games on okay. the WiiWare service. Now, so, I almost put um, Chronicles, the My Life yeah. is a King, My Life yes. is a Dark Lord on here. Uh-huh. And, and I didn't. Because they are just so big, yeah, yeah. They're they, they're easily they have WiiWare to be games, the, the most involved, like full WiiWare RPGs, right? Uh, they're very of the era. It's lots of talking and doing little yeah. silly, like oh, go catch this Moogle that's off in the side of the, you know, like they're a uh, little jank. Yeah, well, uh, dialogue wise, they're like RPGs, but gameplay wise, they're very different. Because yeah, uh, yeah, my yeah, life yeah. as a king plays like a city builder, and my life yes. as a dark lord 
plays like a tower defense game. Yes. And it's really weird that Square Enix has not re-released these anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I would love to last... see like bigger, more refined versions right? of both of these. Yeah. I would love to see a deluxe collection of these two just with some, some cleaned up, maybe a little extra content. Uh, but they are very strange and very goofy and uh, definitely worth checking out. It's I think it's the only Wii exclusive games that Square Enix released that I mm-hmm. can think of. Um, but it's uh, they're just very strange. And then yeah. the other one is uh, Final Fantasy IV The After Years, which yes. technically is not a WiiWare ex- uh, original, nor is it a WiiWare exclusive. But yeah, I still cause... wanted to mention it just because of how weird and indicative of the WiiWare service it was. Yeah. Because... Uh, it released across the summer of 09 because it was episodic because each individual episode was too big to be a WiiWare title. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was originally a mobile phone game that was ported to Wii. And I'm not talking like Android iOS. I'm talking old feature phones. Yeah, feature phone game. Yeah. And uh, the the first chunk that you could buy, which I want to say was 15 bucks just by itself, was the first three chapters Mm -hmm. and then each individual chapter was like another six or eight bucks so it ended up being a full price game by the time you're done with it but it was also the length of a full price game by the time you were done with it yeah and uh and it was just so bizarre to see what was essentially a 16-bit jrpg re-released in 2009 Mm -hmm. as an original title that was kind of wonky and budgety uh and which I think are words that can be described for most of the WiiWare library, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I was going to say, while I was kind of thinking about uh, My Life as a King, like, yeah, almost all of the games are kind of jank and weird. Yeah. I, again, I think it, a lot of it just has to be size limitations. There just right. wasn't a lot of space. Yeah. Um, everything's just a little goofy, a little yeah. strange, a little floaty, a little weird, a little right. whatever, um, kind of across the board. Uh, they they sure. did eventually port after years to PSP, which yep. a lot of people say is probably the the definitive way to play it. It was in the Final Fantasy IV Complete Edition, or Correct, whatever they yeah. called it. Yeah. Um, now, the the one uh, complaint I'll have about that, and the, the later remake of it, uh, which I don't like the 3D remake of it at all, but uh, my complaint about those is because they're not uh, spelled out episodically, because it tries to treat it as one complete game, Yeah, it kind of feels a little more tiring, because... It's just all of it at once. The pacing has got to be off, right? Yeah, the pacing is weird. There's a lot of uh, exposition explaining things that happen in other chapters you just played um, because it expected you to take a few weeks or a month off between each chapter. Yeah. Um, So it's a little uh, oddly paced when you play it all as one. So uh, I I think I enjoyed it the most when I played it on on the Wii. I think I'm on my I'm on my last yeah, one now. Yeah. yeah. So this is my big one. This is a three parter, yep. and uh, I know a lot. I almost have already, put these on here, but you had already done it. So a lot of people were probably yelling like, "Where are the Rebirth games? Uh, Gradius, Contra, and Castlevania Adventure Rebirth? Yes. Uh, all of these uh, Konami classics got uh, uh, WiiWare versions. Yeah. Uh, which released were in, essentially all just ports of the Game Boy versions, weren't they? Um. No. Oh. Not really. It's weird. Um, I will say I'm not familiar enough with individual Contra and Gradius levels to be able to say that like, oh, this is a port of this combination of levels from the Game Boy. But I don't believe so. Now, uh, Re- Adventure Rebirth was specifically Castlevania Adventure. Right. Um, but they, they are uh, each developed by M2. They released mm-hmm. uh, between 20, 2008 and 2010. Um, Castlevania The Adventure is a remake of the Game Boy title of the same name. Yeah. And I, I feel is the most critically important of these three because Castlevania the Adventure sucks. It's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. it's not awesome. It's really bad. Yeah, to go, play. go and play it on the Castlevania anniversary collection and you'll see how much it needed uh, a remake. And this version is a completely serviceable, enjoyable yes. Castlevania game. Yeah. It's nowhere near as jank as the Game Boy game. Yes. And this this is a, a title that this is a necessary remake for a title that aged poorly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's really awesome to see, and it is yeah. locked in WiiWare. Yep, of all fucking places. Yeah, Gradius Rebirth. Um, I believe is kind of a greatest hits. So I was just looking it up. Apparently, it's based on the MSX ports of the the Nemesis games. Okay, but like more than one game. It's like a yeah, collection two, of levels M- from the two Nemesis MSX games. It's kind of yeah. those bundled together. Um. 
I like this. This might be. I haven't played it enough. This I might be my favorite of version of like OG Gradius. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one when it came out. I played a ton of this. It is so much fun. Uh, the Konami code can be used as yep. much as you want, Yep. which means you can keep from death spiraling during your run. <laughs> right. Um, I, I get a little annoyed that Konami in later games makes the Konami code kill you or do mean stuff occasionally. Right. Like, yeah. The Konami code was necessary for a lot of us. Not even later games. By the time that Gradius 3 came out, they were already doing that. True. Um, it, it is a fun, uh, feels like an easier entry in mm -hmm. the franchise, in the Gradius franchise. A little bit, yeah. Um, it's just it's just a really good version of oh, Gradius. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, Contra Rebirth takes the dual weapon system from Contra 3... And and this is this is on easy mode at least lets you keep your weapons on death, yeah, which makes for an infinitely more enjoyable contra experience for me. Uh, that that was a, a a big one for me. Like getting to keep your weapons means yes. it's it's just it's just nicer. It's just easier. It's 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 more fun. I have a much more fun time with it yeah. than I do any other. Contra. I'm not sure which Contra this is supposed to be. I think this based one is off relatively of. original. Um, it definitely thing, feels real weird, right? One one thing that I uh, remember about these, uh, and I hope I'm not misremembering, was that uh, all three of them worked with GameCube controllers. Oh, did they? Oh, if interesting. I remember right. Very interesting. Um, in Contra, your hero options are Bill Riser or Genbei Yagyu from mm -hmm. Neo Contra. But apparently you can unlock Brownie, which is an android girl, or a lizard man named, like, Snake Pliskin, and he <laughs> is a lizard man, so, like, that's the joke. Nice. Um, I did not unlock either of those guys, so that's, that, that, I, I didn't get that far. I'm, but, I'm historically bad at Contra, so I don't remember yeah, me getting too. very far in this. Yeah. You know. Um, all three games feature the ability to add extra lives, as well as yes. three difficulty mo modes, including easy. Yes. Uh, and for three franchises that are kind of known for their difficulty, like right. classic Castlevania, Contra, and Gradius, it feels really good to have these as like accessible options. Right. You know, like if Contra Rebirth was available and someone's like, yeah, I kind of want to get into running guns, but they're so hard and like Contra seems cool. I would totally recommend Contra oh, Rebirth. Yeah. Like go play the shit out of this. Go play Gradius Rebirth. You know, like right. th these are fun, accessible, good looking games uh, and you just I, have to have a wii that is hacked and an sd card or uh yep. an emulator or yeah you know maybe they shouldn't be locked to this platform <laughs> ridiculous sad yeah. ridiculous what is your final pick uh i'm gonna go with uh both dr mario online rx and tetris party yes which are two separate unrelated games but um they're so good so uh, Dr. Mario was one of the launch titles, I think, or shortly after launch uh, for WiiWare. And then uh, uh, Tetris was released later that year uh, by Hudson. But mm -hmm. the the good thing about both of these is they both support four-player simultaneous multiplayer, both locally and online. Not that the online works anymore. Right. Um, but we played so much of these. These were clearly the WiiWare games we played the most in my house uh, were Dr. Mario and, and Tetris. And we played a ludicrous amount of them. Um, my friend's wife got so uh, aggressively competitive about Tetris that she bought a Wii. Uh, she got this game and then she would call us like two or three times a week and be like, you need to get on your Wii and get on Tetris because I am ready. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Calm down, lady. Um. But yeah, it was uh, it was good times. We we played yeah. a ton of both of these. Now the Doctor Mario port did shoehorn in this shitty uh, pointer mode where mm -hmm. you'd use your Wii remote to point at the screen and grab a pill and turn it around. Oh, and, and it was really bad. It's really bad. Uh, that and I don't awful. I don't recommend that mode at all. Uh, but the regular mode is great. Uh, However, if you're just wanting to play Dr. Mario, I feel like every version of Dr. Mario since then has been based on this version because they all feel like this. Um, yeah. So like the, the Dr. The, Luigi and uh -huh. uh, I don't remember what the... There's a 3DS one, wasn't there? Or is it DSiWare? Yeah, yeah. There's a DSiWare one, which yeah, I want to say there was a 3DS uh, online version. Too. Yeah. Um, There's been but several. But, but they, they all feel like they're based on this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so sure. if, 
if you're missing out, you can play one of those other ones. But Tetris Party was still a really good version of Tetris. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it got a retail release as well later that added some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but they were they were the WiiWare games in my house. And it's, yeah. we played just, well, these and Sexy Poker. We did play a bit of Sexy Poker. <laughs> I was installed Sexy Poker just to see <laughs> how sexy it was. So I was like, me... it's a fucking WiiWare title. I can't imagine it's very sexy. So let me spoil it for you. Because my ex made me buy Sexy Poker because she thought it was the funniest shit ever. Yeah. The options screen and sexy poker shows you a preview of all of the girls and the preview that it shows you is the most undressed they get (laughs) and so if you just just want those five jpegs you yeah you can do that you can get it immediately yeah um let's do some honorable mentions uh one not on this list that i wanted to mention was blaster master there was a blaster master for we wear I al- I almost put that, but I thought that you had it on your list. It was, and then I played more of it, and I just don't <laughs> like it. It's so it's That's almost there. It's like right there, but it's just. I think in a world where we didn't have Blaster Master Zero, it might have made it. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's just a little too jank. It's a yeah. little too mean. Mm-hmm. Um, only shooting eight ways in yeah. uh the top down mode when enemies can move in full three sixty. Right feels weird especially on a device with like if uh, i don't know it just didn't make the cut for me uh um, and another one that i'm gonna add that uh is on my list but it didn't make the cut for similar reasons as star soldier R. yeah i, I played I that one star soldier i wanted it on my list too but it's it's such it's just a too snippet short. yeah yeah just, just having caravan mode was it a 30 second two minute and five minute modes or something like yep. that yep. and uh and that's just not enough game for me i need yep. more than that uh, there are games that are available in better forms elsewhere. Uh, Cave Story and La Mulana are two mm-hmm. games I love. I've played the crap out of. Um, and they were huge deals when they came out. They were. Uh, World of Goo and Retro City Rampage, widely available. I played RCR on 3DS, but it, it was mm-hmm. available here. And yeah. there again, all of these games, much better versions available elsewhere. Right. Um, Mega Man 9 and 10, widely available. Um, they were but they big were deals. massive they were really deals, big when, deals when they came out. Uh, Crystal Defenders has been on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I I played so much Crystal Defenders on my iPod Nano. <laughs> I love that game. And you can still get it on the uh, Xbox Marketplace. Uh, the old 360 port is available, yeah. and the 360 port is literally the two WiiWare games just bundled together, and you can pick it up on a modern Xbox. Uh, Military Madness Nectaris, which what a cool remake to get! Right, uh, still available on Xbox, which yep. is where you probably should play it. Yes. Uh, Doc Lewis's Punch Out. Yeah. This was one of those games where, again, it was like, it was such a snippet. Yeah. It's it was just demo of Punch Out 09. Yeah. Uh, it was, we punch out, but like you can fight Doc Lewis and that's it. It was Club yeah. Nintendo exclusive, along with a game I tried to love, Grill Off with Ultra Hand. <laughs> it's just so jank and stupid. Yeah. It's so basic. And as soon as you, so for people that don't know, Grill Off with Ultra Hand, you get an Ultra Hand, which is the big squeezy hand Nintendo yeah, used yeah. to make. Yeah. And there's a grill and food drops onto it and you have to pull it off before it burns and put it on a plate. But if you drop one piece of fucking food, you get a game over screen, you go all the way back to the menu. Right. And it's just not... Which is very old arcade style, but... Yeah. Just wasn't fun. Right. You know? I don't know. In 2009, that was not the kind of gameplay we were all looking for. No. It was was not. So uh, uh, most of these games here uh, in the honorable mentions are really good some of them yeah. i would say better than most if not all of the stuff we picked on our list right. like la mulana is really up there for oh, me yeah it's a really good game this version of military madness is a really good version of military madness this yeah. star soldier is an awesome star soldier but for various reasons you know and they i didn't i, I, I don't think i actually list. mentioned what crystal defenders even is it's a a, a tower defense game yeah featuring yeah, yeah. final fantasy characters mm-hmm. and it's adorable and if you like tower defense at all, you should play it. Yeah. So it, again, this is just the weirdness of WiiWare that yeah. so many of these games, like if you're going to play them, play the better version. Uh, right. That, that is hell. There's better versions you can emulate of some of these. True. Yeah. Um. And and so it just feels weird to put them on our top ten because we I think we really did strive to make it something like, hey, what are you really only going to get at WiiWare? Right. Exactly. And what's worth your time? Right. You know. Um. As far as legacy, mm-hmm. uh, we, we kind of touched on some of it, but the the, the, the WiiWare 
Nintendo didn't seem to know what to do with WiiWare. Right. Um, there was a lot of garbage on it. Hudson was surprisingly prolific. Yes. In the WiiWare space. Right. Uh, um, but a lot of their stuff too was chaff. It was yeah. junk. There's a lot of just junk games. Hudson was pretty prolific on the Wii in general. True. Yeah, that's true. They just had a lot of Wii stuff. We didn't even mention uh, Adventure Island WiiWare. Yeah. Oh, that that I. It's a jank version of Adventure Island, but I still that, enjoyed it. That's kind of your blaster master. Is yeah, like, yeah. It's there. I don't know that you should play it, but it's okay. <laughs> What's funny is there's another Adventure Island game on the Wii that was released on a disc in Japan. Yeah. Uh, but I think the WiiWare one might be a touch better. <laughs> and it's still pretty jank. Uh, there were a total of 431 games, 200 in Japan, 333 in North America, 272 in European territories released for WiiWare. Um, the final release was the North American release of karaoke joy sound in july 2014 yeah and it was a release that had come out five years prior in japan um we were i don't know that anybody was looking for new we games in <laughs> july of 2014 we were was just kind of forgotten yeah it was just kind of left by the wayside right. because because the wii u came out the wii u came out and then we kind of stopped differentiating between right. like retail and app versions of releases yeah. you know it's just everything's just software now it's it just because it was relatively late in the xbox 360 and ps3's life cycle when suddenly they were like well we'll just release the same full retail games digitally yeah on our systems instead of just these smaller bite-sized titles yeah and then when they're all in the same pool it's what, what's yeah. the point in differentiating right it, it doesn't so, achieve anything yeah by the time the wii u came out there wasn't a, a real differentiation between yeah. full retail and digital downloadable games this is this kind of 2005 to 2010 era in electronics design is fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, this this like right up against smartphones, things like the Wii, the PSP, yeah. uh, the DS, but more specifically the later DS revisions that had right. like DSiWare DSi. and stuff. Yeah. Where everyone knew we were careening toward this everything device. Yeah this lifestyle device and everyone wanted to be the company that made the everything device. And it just, it ended up being the boring answer that was the correct one, which is yeah. smartphones, which we all well, saw coming. But also yeah. it was, it was this turn towards digital marketplaces and, and digital releases. But before the infrastructure was there where everybody could download massive things all the time yeah uh, and they couldn't stream massive things so you had to keep things relatively bite-sized but you still wanted to move towards that digital space yeah and so we were getting these really awkward titles there yeah it was so strange yeah. like this 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 particular era right here where we wear sits mm -hmm. is like right when we had just busted out of the the like feature phone era yeah. where like the games really weren't worth noticing yeah. And we were just starting to come into like, hey, some of this stuff is like really worth looking at. Yeah. Before that smartphone deluge of everything right. is an app now kind of came yeah. down the pipeline. Right. Um, and I, I guess I'm kind of getting into final thoughts. Uh, there, there, There is some good stuff on WiiWare. Yeah. Uh, I really particularly wish Konami, like if they would just release a Rebirth collection, just their three Rebirth games for like 20 bucks, you know, upscaled or whatever. That would be great. I would totally pay I am, that. I'm offended that those weren't in uh, the Castlevania Anniversary Collection they and the Contra been. Anniversary Collection. And they why isn't been. there a Grady's Anniversary Collection, Konami? <laughs> the only thing I can guess, and this is a complete guess, I have no mm. idea, is that the tech behind running WiiWare games, like the engine, was particularly yeah. weird. Right. Because they all have this sort of Flash game feel to them. They could just use Dolphin. It's there. True. They could just simulate it. They could. They could. Um, so that, I, I don't know, but it, there, there's some good stuff here, but for yeah. every good title, there's kind of a bunch of chaff there or is. stuff that's available elsewhere or just straight garbage. Yeah. Um, and by the end of the, we wear life cycle, it felt like it was kind of a dumping ground for just like, right. maybe we could trick you into spending three bucks on this Yes. or pardon me, 300 Wii points. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but there are specifically, I would say it's worth seeking out WiiWare just to play the Rebirth games. But yeah. again, everything on our list is fun. There's there's cool stuff here. Yeah. Definitely. And, and even the honorable mentions uh, are worth checking out if you're yeah. checking I mean, out if the WiiWare library, library anyway. Yeah. 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 Also, if you're already just on the internet in general, uh, you go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash retro warriors. 
where you can get us talking about weddings for I gotta 16 say, uh, minutes. Justin, that was not your worst segue. <laughs> I was, did it. I did it. Hey. Look, uh, segueing is a skill. It's a gift that I have. Uh, it's not one that I'm, you have. I'm gifted in this way. And it is a skill. Is it's not one you have. What elevates me above the rest of you. We we call you normies oh, okay. uh, in the professional segue uh, <laughs> market. As as <laughs> I do believe that you would hang out in a professional segue market. <laughs> But more like the scooter segue. Please go to our Patreon. Uh, please give us money. Money us, please. It's not much money. You're already betting your money on sports games and stuff. <laughs> you might as well bet some money on us releasing more shows because that's a bet. You, you'll all you'll always win that bet. All right, you lost it. <laughs> you, you briefly had some some skill in the segue, and then you just lost it. For right about now. a moment, the clouds parted, and I. <laughs> <laughs> we want to think. Um, the following patrons. It'd be, it'd be like a, a storm cloud coming into the air, but then instead of the sound of thumber, thunder, it's just a loud fart. <laughs> we got one thunderous <laughs> fart. <laughs> we want to thank the following patrons, starting with Kai Ove Lingva. The, it got messed that up. One broke there, again. Yeah, it got messed uh, up. Uh, uh, Travis Graff. King Vidiot. Matthew Davis. Jamo. Jordan Eish. Nicholas Perfect. Luke Saracen Clark. Dean Schmidt. And the Copy Samurai. Does the coffee samurai fight in the name of coffee? Or do you think the coffee samurai fights coffee? I think it's just a samurai that's also a barista. <laughs> well, samuraiing doesn't pay the bills. Right. Yeah. Right. You are a barista and you moonlight as, <laughs> exactly. yeah, as a ronin <laughs> traveling the countryside. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, anyway, that's we wear. It was, uh, that was weird. It was very weird. We didn't make a single wee joke. We did not make one dick joke. Not a single one. For people that uh, weren't around when the Wii came out, uh, before the name Wii was normalized, yeah. both iPad and Wii were hilarious names that we iPad all not made hilarious. Fun of. Oh, I made fun of iPad constantly. I know you did. Oh, man, that was a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week. And as always, let us let cling us together. Cling together.